All right, my friend. All right. We all ready to get started? Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. <laughs> my name's Brent Hopkins. I'm Mark Leader with Movement Mortgage. How many of you have heard of Movement Mortgage? Okay. Wow. Good chunk of the group. I like it. <coughs> um, I also want to introduce in the back of the room, we've got Matt Burrs. Hello. Todd Hernandez. Hello. And Dolores in the very back. And I want to big, big uh, uh, thank you to Jenny Michette for letting us use. I'm sure I mastered your name like I always do, Jenny. But uh, <laughs> letting us use the facilities and co-hosting this this event with us. Um, so, if, if, how many of you have been in the business more than a year? Two years? Five years? Okay. Especially you five-year people. Is the industry different today than it was five years ago? Yeah. How about a year ago? Yeah. Yeah. That goes out to everybody, right? Yeah. Um, and, and, and the industry continues to shift. And uh, so one thing that we want to do is we want to champion helping you with resources and helping you with ways to increase your, your business. Um, so I'm going to introduce our guest speaker in just a moment. But first of all, just a quick shameless plug for Movement Mortgage. For anybody who doesn't know, um, it's an awesome company, by the way. I've been with the company about seven years now uh, since it was a little bitty company. And the thing that we're kind of known for is our speed. Our underwriter is the first person to see the file before we ever process the file. So the underwriter up front underwrites the file in six hours in most cases or less. Okay. Then our processor is now processing to the underwriter's feedback that was provided in advance and has seven days to process that file and then a one day close. All designed to be able to close five to eight business day if we had to. Anybody know what federal law says uh, regarding lending, what the federal law regarding time frames is? 17. 17? Mm -hmm. Seven days. You can't Seven. close until the eighth business day by federal oh, law. Okay. We're designed to be able to comply with that federal law. Uh, and of course, I always get the question, closing disclosure. Mm -hmm. What about that? Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. issue the closing disclosure in most cases during the process so that the three days is kicking along while we're waiting for the appraisal or while we're waiting for a verification of employment or something like that. Anyway, all that all that to say is it's not unusual for us to have docs sitting at title and a buyer sign and we're just waiting around on a seller. That's a good place to be, right? Um, so now, without further ado, the shameless plug. Any, anybody just love the, the, the idea of the shameless plug? I do. Um, without further ado, our presenter today is Mr. Jeff Zimfer. He's a former national sales trainer for Tony Robbins Group, uh, where he shared the stage with best-selling authors such as Brian Tracy, Michael Gerber, and Jack Canfield. Uh, he's also a former national marketing director uh, with a, in, in real estate branding with the advertising firm Hobbs & Herger that has helped hundreds of agents break through to, to new and higher levels. Uh, so, And he's a really motivational guy and a fun guy too, just so you know. This isn't going to be boring content. Um, he's also the author of Instant Referrals. This is, this is a book that was authored for mortgage professionals. Uh, and uh, he is now a national sales coach with Move the Mortgage. We're so lucky to have Mr. Jeff Zimfer. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Grant, and thank you to people out there in Facebook land. Let's see if we can allow you guys to participate with the virtual audience. Say hello. Hello. All right, love that. Here we are in... Is it okay to say we're in Las Vegas or what? Or do you, prefer, do you like, do you, are you, do you want to be purists and say Henderson or what? All right, I'm just seeing that's a, that's a pretty funky angle there. So anyway, thank you for that intro. Let's get right into it here today. I want to start by asking you guys a question. Um, what brought you here today? Information. This, information. Awesome. What do you want to learn? Everything. Everything. <laughs> we're going to be here a while. <laughs> right thank you everything so anybody else why did you come today what about the title the content what about it attracted you your experience whose experience yours mine oh, what about that do you want to take away from today anything that you have to offer so wide open right okay thank you disruption disruption yeah, what's going on in the market are you feeling a disruption out there oh, yeah. anybody else no. yeah okay so this, the title, whatever, kind of caught your attention. What, what, what are you feeling differently about the market right now than maybe before? Anybody, go ahead. This side of the room hasn't spoken yet, so you're next. Not feeling good about the market as far as Zillow, Amazon, blah, 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 blah. 
Okay. All right. So we can talk about that. Does anybody kind of share those feelings? You're a little bit unsure about Zillow, or Amazon, or you like, no, not a threat, not a big deal. Okay. Just curious. Because usually there's people that fall into one of three places with somebody like Zillow, for example. Either they love them, they hate them, or they're ambivalent about them. Okay. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, what, if there was one big takeaway you would want to get out of today, what would it be? One extra deal. One extra deal. All right, I might be in the market for buying soon, and maybe that's a <laughs> possibility, but then everybody's going to rush up and say, hey, why should I choose you? I guess that's the question we need to get down to, right? Right? Why should I choose you over you or you or you or you or you? That's really the question we're dealing with, isn't it? Versus choose Zillow or choose somebody else, right? So we're going to talk about this, this concept of right, what's happening in the market, the, the, the digital real estate shift. And here's what we're going to do. It's a very, it's a nice intimate group here today. So we're going to be um, interactive, right? Participate, chime in, ask questions, raise your hand, all that kind of jazz. Let's just have a conversation. I don't want this to be a lecture. Is that okay? And then let's have some fun too. All right. <laughs> Um, and I want to make sure we keep this, our promise to each other that we are going to hold ourselves accountable in this room today. Accountable for what? Accountable for playing 100% full out. Because I'm going to give you 100% of my time, right, of what I've got to share with you. And I just ask that you guys give me that back. Fair enough? Because we, if we all participate 100% and we like raise our hands when we, yes, that makes sense, or you have a question, whatever, participate, then we all get more out of it. And by the way, for those of you who want to take notes, I love that. You should know, here's my first gift to you, an early Christmas gift. You're going to get the slides. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. All right. So let's kind of get into it here. Let's, let's talk about the five trends impact, impacting real estate. Uh, number one, the digital culture. Oh, I need a new battery for my clicker. Digital culture integration. Digital culture integration. You all walked in showing and demonstrating how comfortable you are now living with technology every single day. Because you walked in holding what? Your phone, your smartphone, right? That didn't happen just a few short years ago, right? As a matter of fact, many people would call your smartphone, right? Your smartphone, the new television, the new radio, okay? So we are comfortable with technology in all aspects of our life, and we've pretty much grown up now. We have matured when it comes to technology. And so what this graph is intended to represent is like, you know, back in the 60s, little impact of technology in our lives. Now, big impact. And it's changed really rapidly just over the last five years, 10 years. Like who here remembers being uncomfortable with online banking, right? <laughs> Remember that? You're like, oh my God, are you kidding me? Online banking? No. And now, guess what we do? We allow a total stranger to meet us at our house and get in this total stranger's car and have them drive us someplace we've never met them before. Hmm? Who here has used Uber or Lyft? Ride sharing. Yeah, we all do, right? And what about, have you had the food delivered to your house, right? By Postmates or DoorDash or any of these types of people. Same thing. We're comfortable with the integration of technology. We live and breathe technology every single day. So much so that one of the things that's shifting in real estate is the speed expectation. And that consumers today expect it fast and in a lot of cases cheaply, and, but with good quality and not wanting to sacrifice those two things. Right? So that's one of the things we're, we're going to talk about here as well. And so we, as you can look at these slides later on when you get home, these are some of the milestones that have happened over the years when it comes to technology, right? Email. Oh, remember when email was so awesome and sexy and cool and ding, you've got mail, right? Now it's like, oh, crap. More email, right? So we've, we've, we've matured. And then Google and Amazon and Facebook and the Apple phone and now all this artificial intelligence. And oh, by the way, Self-driving cars. <clears throat> Who's a little uncomfortable with that still? <laughs> yeah, well, guess what? We were once uncomfortable with online banking too, right? Who believes though that there will come a time where that you won't be as uncomfortable with that? It's just a matter of time, really, is what it is, okay? So, the growth of mobile, the rise of mobile, that's one of the biggest things impacting uh, you know, technology and real estate is that, as I said earlier, you guys live and breathe on your phones. Right, you have a computer in your phone. You can get access to any information you want in the entire world with your phone in the palm of your hand. It goes in your purse, in your back pocket, and we undervalue and underappreciate the power of what that really is. So it's really driving expectations across a lot of our lives. Anybody, Keller Williams agents here? No? Okay, so Keller Williams, uh, in case you didn't know this, have this wonderful voice-activated personal assistant called Kelly, 
where you can actually speak into your phone and say, hey, Kelly, add John Smith to my referral network in my database. Bing, that contact goes in your database. Hey, Kelly, how close am I to my gross commission income goals right now? Am I on track to hitting my goals this year, Kevin? You have achieved $250,000 in gross income so far. You are 73% of the way towards your goal. Hmm. Show me listings in, right, Irvine, California. <laughs> listings come up. So technology, it's infiltrated our lives, and, the, and the, the battle is being waged on the mobile device, the mobile phone. I don't think I can overstate this, and we'll talk about this in the context of your websites, okay? But think about it, right? The battle's being ha waged on the phone. Everything's happening on the phone. From Rocket Mortgage to Bank of America to Movement Mortgage and our mobile-friendly app, right, to Zillow and Redfin, that's where people live and breathe today, yes? <laughs> yes? So the thing you need to ask yourself is when you start talking about how can you stay relevant, how can you get chosen as the agent, are you mobile, not friendly, but are you mobile first? Do you have a seamless mobile experience for your clients? Because that's the new expectation. So I mean from the first point of contact, your website, if they want to look at listings, right? Um, if they want to engage with you and have a conversation, so this would include things like texting and all that kind of jazz, right? Reduce the friction. Reduce the friction from your process. That's the first step, okay? And speaking of mobile phones, fun stat here. It just shows that more people have a mobile phone than have electricity in the world. Which I always wondered, well, how do they charge your phones then? You know, I was wondering if they don't have electricity. How do they charge their phone? But anyway, by 2020, 70% um, of the people will have a mobile phone in the world, okay? So again, it's just growing like crazy. Number two thing that's driving uh, the impact to us in real estate is, guess who's in control? Not you. Remember how it used to be that? Remember how it used to be, you wanna look at a house? Sure, when can I meet you? Now, do I even need you to look at a house? No, I can just go to a lockbox and type in a code and get the keys right there, right? I can look at houses online, I can schedule showings, I can have uh, repairs done, I can get a mortgage online. I don't need the middleman anymore, okay? So the shift has happened, right? Now, consumers are in control. They're in the middle of all that. And they will contact you when they're darn ready to and not a moment before. Right? But we're going to talk about how to actually address this. Okay? Here's a quote from Purple Bricks. Any, is there Purple Bricks out here at all yet? No? There's the flat fee real estate brokerage? Okay? Somebody saying yes, they are? <laughs> okay. So, what's that? Yeah, so open doors here also. Yeah, exactly. We're going to talk about open door as well. But look at Here's the CEO of Purple Bricks. The market has spoken, right? The shift has taken place. There's pressure on commissions. 10 years ago, the gatekeeper was you, the agent, right? Now consumers, consumers have access to information. So here's the key I want you to take away. First thing, the role of the agent is more of trusted advisor. Trusted advisor. It's not about, yeah, uh, what do I do as a real estate agent? I show you homes. No, you don't, <laughs> right? Yes, I may get to the point where I want you to take me to look at a home, but that's not really where your value proposition is. And if that's where you think it is, it's time to rethink your value proposition, okay? All right, third trend that's impacting us is the real estate disruptors. Ah, yes. Love this quote here. Railroads are in trouble because they assume to be in the railroad business than the transportation business, okay? How many here are in the home selling business? Couple people, couple hands, couple people not sure. Should I raise my hand? I don't know. I don't want to get yelled at. Right? I want to get all A's and a gold star. Okay. Ultimately, the end result is you sell a home. That is a transaction, right? But if you think that you're, like I said earlier, that if you think your job is showing homes, you're going to be subject to the same fate as the railroads. Okay. Does this make sense, guys? Conceptually. Okay. Good. Now check this out. Right. This is the impact that Uber and Lyft have had on taxis and rental cars in five years, okay? Taxis, right, used to, and rental cars used to equate for 80% of the transportation, right? In five years, they've gone down to less than 10%. Did you guys hear that? Yeah. From 80% to 10% in five short years. Mm -hmm. That's a disruption. Am I saying that's what's gonna happen to you? No, okay? What I am saying, though, is that to be aware of the trends and the expectations from people, and then how do we prepare ourselves to not 
uh, to be less impacted by this, okay? Um, so in the past, speaking of mortgage, we're subject to this just as much as you are, right? We had just a few big banks, right? B of A, Wells Chase, all that kind of stuff. We have some big retail mortgage lenders. We've been in this game since 2008. We're the, one of the you know, top 10 lenders, <coughs> 12 billion in loans last year, right? Mortgage brokers and all that. But look at the state of the world today, right? Here it is, now it's crazy, right? There's so much noise and, 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 and mind share, right? A battlefield towards mind share, it's incredibly, incredibly complex. Consumers, quite fr frankly, are confused. Mm -hmm. They don't know what's real, what's the truth. That's why I'm their trusted advisor. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. That's why you're their trusted advisor. That's the first thing to recognize is with all this great technology, it's how do you facilitate and use that technology? How do you help clients benefit from it? Right? And we're going to talk about that as well. Because when there's a lot, when there's confusion, people need a guide. Right? They need somebody to help them along the way. That's part of your role also. Now, look at over here. We'll just look at this side of the slide first. Venture capital dollars invested in real estate, 2015, 1.8 billion. Two short years later, $12 billion of venture capital. Where do you think all this money is going into real estate? What are they trying to impact or improve? They're marketing to get the market share away from us. No. no. Marketing? What are, they, what are they really trying to improve? I think they're trying to figure out where their niche can be to make money off of it because they see that real estate is a way of making money. Sure. What, I'm sorry, what did you say? Somebody over here? Over oh, for investment only. To try to impact their bottom dollar, obviously. So what we're saying here is that the venture capital dollar investment in real estate tech for 2017 is 12 billion dollars, right? What we're saying is that the people with the money, the people that invest hundreds of millions of dollars of co in companies and technology, do that because they see real estate as one of the f the last big industries that is ripe for disruption. All otherwise stated, ripe for improvement, ripe for in efficiencies. Mm -hmm because it's still very fragmented and kind of a broken process, right? Where you get to the closing table and you got all this paperwork and all this kind of jazz and there's so many different roads along the way to get there, right? So this is what they're, they're addressing here is how do we deliver a better experience to the end user? That's the key. Now, look at this comment from Zillow back in 2015. We sell ads, not houses. This comment from them just a couple months ago, 2018. We purchase the home, do all the work a seller would do and put it back on the market in short order in partnership with agents and brokers. Does that sound a little different than we run ads? Yeah. Hmm. Kind of home buyers. Have you anybody heard the term iBuyers? <laughs> right? So iBuyers, much like Open Door, iBuyer, oh, Zillow came out with their version of that called, I think, Zillow Instant Offers. And what that means is that a seller can list their home with Zillow, right? Zillow buys the house for a predetermined price. And there's certain efficiencies with that and a certain percentage of the market who wants that and likes that. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit more about this when we talk about Open Door as well. But what I'm, how, how many feel threatened by that? A couple of you? Not at all? How come? How come? No. I use them as a value proposition, actually. What do you mean? <clears throat> Whenever I take any of my listings, the first thing I do is get an offer from all three of them to see if I can't beat it. Offer from, oh, from these iBuyers? Open, open, open Door, Zillow? Offer pad, and Zillow. But hmm. the commission, the, the concierge in terms of commission, so their commission rates. Yeah. It averages around 9% for listing fee. It's going to be more than what we can do for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you present that, what do you typically find? Well, how do people respond? Uh, well, <laughs> it, it really depends. Sometimes, uh, in some instances, Zillow does give a, a, a ripe offer, depending on the condition of the house. Yeah. In other ones, you really just show them exactly the certainty why they're going to go with you. So in sense of things, if they're going to charge a 10%, I mean, if, especially if they have a higher price offer, say, for instance, just from mine, mm -hmm. they're able to give you 390 and then still have about thirty thousand dollars concessions. It's still a better offer than you putting it with a fair market value. It would be at like a three sixty after paying a commission. So, mm -hmm. so you can use it as more of a tool to say, hey, listen, especially if you're going to pay this huge service fee of thirty thousand dollars plus you whatever repairs you're going to do, let's get above it. Let's be you know proactive. Let's get these all and try to get you the most money possible. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Exactly about putting it out to a bigger audience as opposed to just limited to that. And that's what I always tell sellers. You know, by putting it out there as opposed to for sale by owner and just having this small market, if you put it out there in the open market, especially where when this is, it's more of a seller's, it's still more of a seller's market, and you put it out there, we're still getting multiple bids on properties, as opposed to just saying, okay, I'm going to sell it to Zillow or Open Door, 
buying tell tell. Well, at least let's put it out there and see what you can get on the open market as opposed to. So when you say put it out there on the open market, what do you mean? The MLS? The MLS, yeah, put it out because I think there's still the buyer demand is out there for properties. And didn't uh, our Greater Las Vegas just shut off listings from uh, Zillow on the MLS? Shut off syndication. They syndication. Mm -hmm. So the thing with Galmore, what they did is they made the decision to, t to, to disconnect from Zillow and then uh, too many brokerages came back and said, no, we don't want that. So they turned around and said, okay, well, we're not going to do that. Interesting. Any idea why the brokerages fought back on that? <coughs> well, no, I think it had to do with they didn't, get, they didn't do their research first was what, they, what the numbers wanted. Hmm. Oh, you mean the bro the uh, uh, board didn't? Correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, what I'm asking is, though, why why some brokers wanted Zillow to be back on there on, on the feed? What was the benefit to them? Um, it's my understanding that a lot of the smaller brokerages um, don't have the ability to, to do what the larger brokerages can in terms mm -hmm. of marketing. For exposure, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. But you, but you just have to re. I mean, you're resubmitting all your listings into Zillow, though, right? There's not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Who 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 by practice does not put listings on Zillow, or do you do you all make it a practice to do it? You do. Why do you do it? Well, because the first part, I mean, just like you said, your consumers that's the first place they're gonna look. Yeah. So if you right. have any indi you know any indiscretions, that looks bad on you. So you should be doing all your own listings on Redfin, Zillow, Trulia, at least double checking them. So. I, I mean, I, that's why I thought it was great for syndication because that's what really sets the trash agents and the regular agents who actually have the yeah, to Yeah, right. Decide. When the when the uh, um, pricing is off and all that exactly. kind of stuff. Yeah. Or if you have misspellings or anything else, because mm. it'd be a hell of a thing if your seller caught it before you did. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but Zillow's not a, their auto their valuation isn't always correct. I no. took a listing and, oh, and they said their valuation was one thing, and I took a listing and I put it on there, and the next day I look and they they brought their valuation to what my listing price was. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you know how the valuation is accounted for? That's what you have to look at. I mean, if it's something in the process, especially when you have this estimate, once you understand like the radius and where your property is, that's what you explain as a, that's the whole point. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, but you, could, you can have one neighborhood, like I live in an exclusive neighborhood right across the street that's really a bad neighborhood, right across the street. And they take properties and show comps from mm -hmm. sales in my exclusive gated, gate guarded golf community and comp it to these houses across the street, which mm. make no sense. It's not accurate. So you know, what's that? Yeah, sure. Well, it's an algorithm and all that, so it's not going to be perfect. Um, which, but what I like about it here is everybody's seeing the opportunity for you as, a, as an agent. This is your expertise, right? Uh, as a matter of fact, there was a Zillow report that was put out about what made you choose a real estate agent, and, and high on the list was expertise. Um, a local expert, right? Somebody knowledgeable, somebody who I could trust and had online reviews, by the way. Um, what was low on there of, of what was what were the reasons that went to you choosing an agent? What was low on there was the fact that they had low fees. That was like number 14 on the list for why somebody chose an agent because they had discounted fees. Mm. Kind of interesting, right? So you guys can Google that own, your, that report yourself. It's the Zillow kind of you know profile of home buyers and sellers kind of thing. Um, but but this is a great conversation because here's what I, I just want to present some information to you, and then <laughs> let's just talk about how we can use this because. You know how many monthly visitors Zillow gets to their website? 186 million. That is the internet when it comes to real estate, which is why you do want to have your properties on Zillow. Because a lot of people, you know, you talk about agents, it's like, oh, Zillow, I hate them. They're trying to displace agents. Look at, guys, here's, here's my take. I don't believe Zillow is trying to displace agents at all, okay? Um, because think about this, right? Um, I had a I had an interview with Tom Ferry yesterday on the pie. Anybody know Tom Ferry? Mm -hmm. right? So I talked to him, posed him that same question. He's like, um, you know, man, I get that question so many times. He, here's what he said. He goes, let me put it to you this way, okay? Um, let's say you are the CEO of the company and you go to the board of directors. I come to you guys, right? And you know that out, out of your billion dollars in revenue, 70% of that billion dollars comes from you, the real estate agent. Okay? from you paying for leads and all this is preferred and all that kind of jazz. And I come to you guys, the board, and I say, hey, guess what, guys? We want to do away with all that, and we just want to go to direct-to-consumer. Mm -hmm. What would you say to me? Are you crazy? You'd get, what? You, you want to cannibalize 70% of a billion dollars in revenue? No. It's not going to happen. So what will likely happen, you know, this is a lot of unknowns here, and this is why this is really just a conversation between us. You guys are going to be more educated than anybody else out here because you came today. So kudos to you. 
all right? So what is likely to happen though, is with these iBuyers that Zillow lists these properties, just like Open Door, if you do the research, what you find out is they only buy very specific properties in a very specific geolocation and a very specific price point and uh, uh, age of home. And of all the people that g present their property to Zillow or Open Door to say, hey, list my property, I'd like to do your thing, right, take your offer, they only list about one and a half percent of those. And so when I'm talking to Tom Ferry yesterday, he told me of a story of an agent who works with Zillow who gave her 300 leads that said, these are properties we are not going to list. And she listed 15 of those leads. And she may be walking around with a Zillow name badge instead of a different brokerage or something like that. But I'm just kind of painting the thick picture of what the future might look like if that's a road for you because for some agents, it might make sense to take a little bit less money or whatever for guaranteed lead flow. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Because they have the deals. They have the lead flow. All right? So just kind of keep your eye on this thing as it continues to evolve over time. All right, guys? This, are you tracking? And of course, we got Redfin, right? And then Open Door speaking to them, right? Um, Open Door is growing like crazy. I got some stats with them. And of course, uh, they're here. They're in Phoenix. Um, they're in a certain part of Southern California as well. I think Riverside area. Um, but look at this. In terms of the growth, for the, again, the iBuyer term, right? The growth from 2016 to 2017, 48% in growth in terms of the number of properties they're buying. This is what I was talking about, the open door buy price. This is the sweet spot. Now keep this in mind, guys. This is education for you. Does anybody ever come up against open door as a competitor for you to list your hat for a listing? When I sold my house in Orange County, I considered these people. Right, Open Door, Redfin, all these people. I didn't go with them, and I'll tell you why at the end of the presentation here today. Um, but at least you want to be educated. You don't want to be blindsided and be like, you know, well, I'm thinking about listing with Open Door. Huh? Well, they suck. How's that going to go over? Right? <laughs> Not too well. Right? You once you understand the sweet spot of where they buy properties and know that. Um, and get educated on what's the average price. Is it, is it, is it a, a fair market price, et cetera? What are they reselling it for? According to the data I've read, they resell it on average for 5% higher than what they bought it for. Um, what else we got here? Uh, the number of, uh, let's see, open door prep days. It takes 13 days to prep a purchased home for resale. So seller says, yep, I'm going with open doors. 13 days later, that home is ready to rock. Is that pretty good? Is that faster than the average? Pretty fast, right? Because guess what? People have a check. They're out. Done. Open door now owns the house. So is there a segment of the population that likes that, that wants that? Is that everybody? No. Guess who's not your market? The people who want that. Okay? Because if they're looking for just wipe their hands of it, yeah, I'll pay 9% listing fee just to be done and have no showings, no repairs, none of that stuff. Just get my check and I'm out. That's not your market. Okay? All right. So some of this is just awareness. All right. Um, and again, this is the increase of purchases between OfferPad and Open Door, which are basically the same thing. 2017, they purchased about 4,000 homes. And just from January to April of this year, it's almost the same. So you can see the pace is increasing, all right? Now, what we don't know is what happens when the market goes down. But I know the market never goes down. No. <laughs> right? What happens? Because they rely on financing, all this venture capital money you saw, they rely on those people to be able to buy properties. And that's why you see them playing right now in Phoenix and these other markets, because it's a very kind of controllable, kind of a you know, safer market for them to play in, if you will. So we'll see what happens as the market continues to evolve and if pricing softens or whatever the case is. Who knows? Maybe their funding dries up. I don't know, right? All I know is right now they've raised $400 million, uh, from investors. So, so far, investors kind of like what they're doing. And then, of course, we have Rocket Homes. Good Lord. Not only did they do Rocket Mortgages, now they can sell your home too, right? Who wants to go with that? Yeah. <laughs> but here's the thing I want to highlight is that this is on their website, and this is every, every report, every research you see about what makes people choose a real estate agent. These three things, local expert, experienced, highly rated, okay? So think about from your branding, your marketing, how can you better establish yourself as a local expert, experienced with buyers and sellers, proven experience, and then you are highly rated, meaning online reviews. Because that's how people are judging you, right? What kind of online reviews do you have, okay? But there's good news. What's up, Facebook land? How we doing? Who do we got here? 
We got Jack, Nicholas Lloyd, Jeff Thomas. What's up, John Schnell? Hey, man. Hope you guys are enjoying the content. All right, so the good news is this. Even with things that have come out in the last 10 years that, that get rid of the middleman, think of what's gotten rid of the middleman. Uber, no more middleman, no more taxis, going right to the ride share. Airbnb, no more hotels, right to the property owner. Middleman gone. Even with all that, right, it still has not impacted the real estate industry to the point where consumers don't think they need a real estate agent. They all think 90 plus percent of people use a real estate agent still. And it's actually increased since 2014. So that's the good news, right? All right, we like good news. Okay? Okay. Um, this is, just reiterates what I said, right? Bottom line is, real, is people still want someone to hold their hand, right? So the research I'm reading is what this comes out of, you're not going anywhere. Now, does that mean it's not gonna get harder for you to compete and win? No, it's gonna get more difficult for sure. The expectations are higher, it's a noisy market, right? There's a lot of competition. That means you are gonna to have to do some things differently than perhaps you've done in the past. Maybe your customer base isn't the same as it's been. I don't know, right? The bottom line is consumers wanna work with an agent. Here's what the market potentially looks like down the road. Here's today, this big blue space, it's all you. You own it, right? And then we've got these little people over here tapping into the lighting. Is that going dark or is that just me? It's going back and forth. It's going back and forth. All right, over here, I thought I was getting a little woozy, you know? Uh, over here, five, about five years out, this is now your market share, and the other chunk of that market share is taken up by the people we're talking about. Zillow, Open Door, OfferPad, Rock, whoever the heck else, right? Purple Bricks, Flat Fee, okay? All that means is if the pie is shrinking, people get a little crazy when there's less pie, right? <laughs> We get a little more competitive, okay? It just means we've got to get that much better. We've got to get that much clearer on our value proposition, okay, guys? All right, this is kind of projecting out 18 months from now. This is our ability to adapt to technology, right? This is kind of representing kind of where we are here today on this trend, and who knows in, two, in a year, basically, this is, it's basically a year and a half, two years maybe, right? 2020, that's it. It's going to be here real soon. Who knows what it's going to look like? Threats of Amazon coming in and all that stuff, I don't really care. Because here's the, what none of these people can, well, Amazon can't do per se. Well, maybe they can, who knows. Let's see, that's a big TBD. All of this is a TBD. None of it matters. It's all white noise. Because all that matters is what you do every day. Because whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen, right? So all you can control is you, what you do, how you get up and show up to work every single day and what your plan is, okay? But here's the key, key takeaway. Whoever can de deliver the best customer experience is who's gonna win. That's who wins. That's why Uber and Lyft are here. That's why Amazon is such an incredible company because it's a great customer experience. So real estate, how many would admit, has not been the best customer experience for quite a long time? Yeah, unfortunately there's three really bad realtors that move around a lot in this country, okay? That's a joke, man. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about, by the way, has this been good so far? Yes. Educational? All right, okay, cool. This is really just educational stuff, hopefully to inspire you to go back and plan for 2019. Now, let's talk about this, the rise of voice. I talked about the technology integration into our entire lives. Who knows what the, these are called? Echoes. What's that? Echoes. Amazon Echoes. Who has one? Three. One, two, you have three of them? Three, I don't have three arms. Three of them? You guys have one? Okay. Not yet? Not yet? Yeah. Brandon, you got one? Yeah, I'm shocked. <laughs> You're shocked. I go in. By the way, does anybody want a good real estate video videographer or photographer? Anybody looking for one? There's one pretty close by. Yeah, right here in the room, okay? Make sure you get with him afterwards, all right? That's why I have him here. If you notice, by the way, this is me, right? I'm, I'm Facebook living. okay? I'm recording the audio and the video so I can repurpose this. Got to start thinking about content, content marketing, okay? Speaking of that, this plays into content marketing, okay? These are what's called smart speakers, these things, right? Uh, Amazon has them through Alexa and Echo. Google has them through Google Home. Facebook just came out with Portal, right? Things like that. Okay, let's talk a little bit about this. Did you know that Amazon teamed up with Lenar Homes to, and I think here as well, to build out um, homes that are, what are they called? The first Wi-Fi certified home design to enable seamless voice control, shopping, and home automation. Jetsons have arrived, right? So you walk into a house, you say, Alexa, turn on the lights. Alexa, movie time, lights go down, TV comes on, fireplace comes on, 
Shopping list. Shopping. You're at the refrigerator and Alexa's in your refrigerator and you're like, Alexa, order this, order that, order this. You're in your car. Alexa, call Brandon, schedule, schedule a photography shoot. You have three. What do you use yours for? Uh, lights. Lights. Music. Music. Weather. Weather. News. Mm -hmm. So one of them's in your kitchen. Uh, down in the break room, yeah. That's in, a big one. Okay. And so, did you say movies? No. Not yet. Okay. Actually, we have four. Yeah. Oh, you have four. Okay. Cool. Let's talk about this. The growth of smart speakership has more than doubled in just one year. All right. 39 million users over the 18, over age 18 in this country have, use a smart speaker. 39 million, okay? Now, here's what I found was interesting, because some people are like, no, I don't have one, no, it's kind of weird, it's kind of freaky. Uh, this is a survey that asks, um, is this creepy or not, is the one I want to focus on. And look at, is this creepy? Like, nobody thinks it's creepy. <laughs> Very few people, why does it keep doing that? Very few people think it's creepy. This right here tells us that, what is that, three or four percent, right? 83 percent think it's okay, right? I know there's the one-off weird thing where Alexa laughs in the middle of the night and all that kind of stuff, but uh, I think, look, at th what they're saying is that the voice recognition software is going to be 99 percent accuracy very, very soon. I know it still isn't perfect. As a matter of fact, Siri is not as good as uh, Alexa, clearly not as good. So if anybody has an Apple phone and you have a Siri, Alexa as well, try, try them both out, okay? 35 million people use one of these once a month. Major growth in the last six months. 40% of the people have started using smart speakers in the last six months. You're an advanced user. When did you start? Oh, it's been years. It's been years. I took, I took an Echo Dot yesterday to a luncheon so that we could have background music. And it was a room full of probably senior citizens, all ladies, and they were so tickled and pink that they were like, wait, it's playing too loud. And all. <laughs> Just tell Alexa to turn off. And she, yeah. she turns around, she goes, Alexa, turn off the music. And it shut down, and, and they were all just so tickled. It was, uh, it was amazing. Guess who's putting that on their Christmas list this oh, year? Yeah. There you go. That was pretty much the number one seller in the Amazon store last year for electronic devices. Is it an Echo or a Dot? Okay? Now, here's an interesting application. You just made me think of this. Is I'm seeing real estate agents start to use these in open houses. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they pre-record. I'll show you how you do this in a minute. They pre-record the home's highlights and features on the uh, Echo or the Dot, and there's a, a sheet of paper as people walk in, and it tells you, ask Alexa to tell you about the features of this house. And there could be several throughout the house as you go into the other rooms and stuff like that. Blows people's minds, okay? Really, really cool. All right, now, who owns the market? We've already said Amazon clearly owns the market. They're getting better at it all the time, okay? Look at this. This is a prediction from 2018, 50 million number of smart, smart speaker users Within two short years, they expect 138 million users of smart speakers. Here's the key, guys. Voice is the new search. Voice is the new search. Smartphone, you're, how many of you are speaking your search now? Right? How many are getting tired of typing with the thumbs? And you're like, let me just going to speak my text. Right? So that's voice-activated search. This is just a different level of that with Alexa, who's now intelligent and getting smarter, and you actually can have a conversation. Look up some of the games you guys can play with Alexa, too. It's pretty interesting and fun, okay? All right, now, to our question of where's your smart speaker typically? Living room, family, den, right? Next location is your kitchen. And then next is bedroom. We're not going to talk about that here, okay? So most people, it's integrated into their, into their daily lives. What do you spend time doing on your smart speaker that it's replacing of what you used to do? Traditional AM, FM radio. So people are not listening to traditional AM, FM radio. They're not on their smartphone as often either if they're looking to get access to information because they can just speak it and get it, right? Weather, traffic, news, financial market updates, et cetera, interest rates, okay? And of course, it's replacing television, et cetera, all these other different things, okay? <clears throat> now, relevant for you as a real estate agent, number one category, age bracket of smart users, 18 to 36. What do we call those people? Millennials. Millennials also? Generation Z. What do they do? They buy first time home buyers. <coughs> first time home buyers. Next biggest age bracket, 37 to 52. Okay? Hmm. Hmm. Are there some applications for. Who's getting some ideas already? Hmm? Saw so you write down the uh, open house idea. Mm -hmm. That's unique and different. Stand out. I'm going to give you some more ideas. Let's get into how you can actually use this in real estate now, okay? 
There is something what's called Alexa skills in the Amazon store. I'm gonna show you what that looks like in a moment. But there's 15,000 as of 2017, so it's a heck of a lot more now, over 15,000 skills in there. A skill, think of it as an app, right? And I'll show you what that means here in just a second. One example of a skill is what's called a flash briefing. There's your news. That's how you get your news, that's how you get your music, that's how you get your market updates. It's basically this, you walk into your Alexa device and you say, Alexa, what's my flash briefings? How does that work? But you set it up on your app. Yes, exactly, we'll talk about that. Uh, I'm just gonna skip, well these are just some examples of commands, right, that many of you may give already, or that other people could. Turn on my chill time, that's, that's music. Turn on your chill time. You walk into the house, you got that chill time music, get out the wine, the fireplace, right? All that stuff. Turn on the TV. Hipster cocktail lady. Hipster cocktail. I have that same playlist on Pandora. <laughs> there you go. All right. Um, I want to show you how this works. I'm just skipping ahead. Remember, you guys are going to get the slides. So here's how this works. Whoever wants to create a flash briefing, right, simply records a snippet of audio up to 10 minutes in length. Snippet of audio. What you do is you take that audio file and you upload that to a flash briefing host. That flash briefing host then sends that audio feed essentially to Amazon as a kind of an RSS feed and that's fed down to the Amazon skill that somebody might subscribe to. So um, if I, what's your first name? Suzanne. So if I want to subscribe to, subscribe to Suzanne's flash briefing about real estate, I would go into the Amazon store right here. I would look up Alexa skills and I would type in a search like real estate, or maybe I would do Las Vegas real estate, or maybe if I knew Suzanne personally and she told me she has a flash briefing, I would look for hers in particular. Does this make sense? All right, so is it, all the dots are being connected, guys? Okay, so this is how people basically activate these skills is they go into Alexa skills. I want you guys to do this at home this weekend, okay? Search the skills, pick the, the category you want. Start with real estate, you're gonna see some real estate come up. There's already people, agents in there that have these, okay? Um, this is one right here that happens to be a custom skill. A custom skill is where you specifically request an individual skill, right? Such as this, Alexa, open Atlanta real estate. Typically, most people are saying, Alexa, what's my flash briefing? And what's coming up is the briefings you've subscribed to or you've enabled if that makes sense. Because to her point, there's an app you download on your phone that you enable to go to your device. It syncs up and all that kind of stuff. There's a little bit, a couple steps, but Amazon will walk you through it. It's really not that hard to do. You can easily Google YouTube videos and all that kind of jazz. What do you guys think? Pretty cool? Yeah? All right. Uh, and there's this company right here. Clicker is dying. This right, company right here called Homey Points. I actually interviewed them on my podcast as well. And what they do is they help you create that right? The skill for you where you show up for Boise real estate. What they do is they have a uh, zip code exclusive service where you can be the agent for that zip code. So when somebody, let's say, wants to, hey, um, search for, you know, Henderson real estate, right? You can come up with that. Now, this company is two real estate agents out of Santa Monica, California, who started this. Uh, and they told me it was one of the things they thought was really cool was when they were out in their local market door knocking, instead of like, you know, asking, are you interested in buying or selling or whatever, right? They're like, hey, by the way, just wanted to let you know, we're two local real estate agents and we've created a, what's called an Alexa flash briefing. Just curious, do you have an own an Amazon Echo device or a dot or something like that? Regardless of what they said, they had a flyer with all the explanation and everything on it. It's like, hey, if you'd like any market updates or community happenings and things like that, here's how you subscribe to our Alexa flash briefing right in the Amazon. Go check it out. And they were like, oh my God. People were like, are you kidding me? What? Wait a minute. I can, I can, is that a like totally different conversation than the usual, right? On the door knocking? Exactly. Very cool. So sets you apart and unique and different. You can create videos about your flash briefing and socialize that, populate that, put them on Facebook Live, right? All that stuff. Here's the real key. What should you talk about? What should you talk about on your flash briefings? <coughs> Pardon me? Market concerns, what's important to them? What's important to them? Okay. So what's happening in the market? Yeah. Market changes, things Social like that? Market changes, any, any kind of incremental changes with mortgage rates. Okay. Yeah, anybody else? What should you guys, what do you think, Facebook land? What should you talk about on your Alexa flash briefings? Mm -hmm. I want to hear from you, Matthew. Come on, John. What's up? What do you guys think? What do you think people want to hear and know? 
How many of you, let me, let me put it this way, how many of you think what they want to hear from you is listing after listing after listing? No. Don't make that mistake. They will unenable you right away. Here's what they want to hear from you. Community. Tell me what's happening in the community. Events. Hey, wh where's the top five Christmas parades here in South Las Vegas? Tell me about the Santa run that's happening down on Fremont Street. Tell me about whatever. Tell me about the community and events that I, as living here, as a resident here, would want to know about and be informed of. Right? Especially if you know the demographic, if they've got kids. Hey, here's the top five dog parks. Right? Hey, anybody listening to this flash briefing want to do... Here's what you talk about. Things that you're passionate about as well that have a, a, a wide interest. Anybody here hike? Okay? Be the hiking realtor. Okay? Go out and talk about, like, hey, I just did this hike last week out in, uh, you know, wherever the heck it is in the Red Rocks. I'm just going to tell you what it is, what it's all about. Boom, boom, boom. It was great. Whatever. Topical events. More so than things related to real estate. Real estate, local business spotlights. The cool coffee shop that just opened up. The awesome restaurant that you just tried. The great sushi bar, right? All that kind of jazz. Buyer and seller tips. Yes. Let me give you some buyer and seller tips for buying. Why is it a great time to buy this time of the year? Right? How, uh, end of the year and all that kind of stuff. Christmas time. People think it's a terrible time to get active in the market. Well, that's not true. Less competition, right? All that stuff. Okay? Education. Think about that. Education, education, education. Here's the opportunity. Be the agent who owns voice in your local market. Because this is so new, really nobody doing it yet. That's the good news. Because eventually everything gets ruined. Right? Facebook ads, are they as easy as they used to be? No. Right? Getting noticed on social media, is that harder than it was before? Yeah. Right? This is your opportunity now because Based on the data and research, people are going to use this more and more and more. So if you can show up in unique and different ways, differentiate yourself, that's a way for you to be remembered and stay top of mind. What's the average cycle for somebody to buy or sell in most cases? Six to 12 months. Six to 12 months. Sound fair? Mm -hmm. On general? general? I know the shorter times, but generally six to 12 months. So here's the thing, guys. How are you staying top of mind in front of them? Right? Is it going to be email? Does email work as good as it used to? No. No. Remember I said that. Okay. Everything good gets ruined. Marketers ruin everything. <laughs> right? So this is a chance for you to really get a big gland, a land grab. And if you're, who here is not comfortable on video? Okay, a couple, three honest hands. If you're not comfortable on video, this is for you. Voice is for you. Or podcasting's for you. Easy way to get started. Okay? You guys like that idea? Aren't you glad you came and paid admission just for that? Yeah, exactly. What do you guys think over there in Facebook land, huh? Okay. Um, okay, last thing, number five, social media. We don't have to hang out here. We know the growth of social media is just insanely off the charts, right? This is the number of social network users worldwide by 2021, 3 billion people, 50% of the entire world, right? And this is, I mean, China really still hasn't even opened up social media, so who knows where that's going. All right, let me skip forward here. Clicker, here's what it all comes down to. You, your digital marketing plan. What are you going to do with all this information? That's the real key. And I want you to remember these three key words, that your number one focus with, with uh, content and online is number one, engage, number two, nurture the relationship, and three, lead to a point of conversion. You're not going to convert everybody, but you first have to engage and have a conversation. So I'm going to, I'm going to, what I want to do now is, remember how we talked about mobile and that it should be mobile uh, first, right? Mm -hmm. Not mobile friendly, but mobile first, mobile only. So your websites are also important though, because people, does anybody go to your website? I hope so. You could find out, by the way, there's this little thing called Google Analytics where you can track site traffic and all that kind of stuff. Side note. So anyway, what I want to show you is like, I want to give a, a lesson in a couple of like um, websites and what's good or bad or indifferent about these websites. So here's Purple Bricks. They are a UK headquartered company. So this is their UK um, uh, website. Now what I want you to look for is when you're looking at these websites, is the value proposition clear quickly clear on what they do, and then is there a clear call to action? Now, with Purple Bricks, is it clear what they do? What do they do? What do they do? Experienced agents, low fixed fee, no commission. So you know what they do. You're obviously, if you're gonna come to their website, you're probably already under the guise that you're interested in real estate, right? What's different about them Experienced agents with a low fixed fee and no commission. Huh, that's cool. Right? The 
call to action is to book a free valuation. How many websites, I can't tell you, that I go to for real estate agents, there is no call to action, right? It's just that blank brochure. And the fact that they have customer reviews helps build trust, yes? Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely, all right, this is a little game we're gonna play. Redfin, is it clear? Just read that headline, is it clear what they do? Sell my home for as low as 1%. Pretty clear. No questioning about that. Okay? Then they have these various calls to action. Gets a little bit kind of confusing and all that kind of jazz, right? But the headline's clear. All right. For sale by owner. We know what that's all about. Here's where they go wrong. I'm selling, I'm buying. Who starts buying there? Right? Nobody really shows up to the website and goes, I'm buying. Right? It's a journey, it's a process, it's an engagement over time, okay? Here's this company, I think this is an international company, Homies Got Your Back. Whoever said who knows what they do, this is the website where you have no idea what the hell they do. Right? Our techs make it easier. Do you even know they're in real estate? No. No, homie. Yo, what's up, homie? That's what that could be. Okay? Terrible. Open door. Look at that call to action and value proposition. Is that clear? Yeah. Get an offer on your home with the press of a button. I like that. What does that say? Easy, frictionless. Okay? Let's skip ahead here. Keep it things simple. Get an offer. Real simple. It's one of the best ones that I've seen. All right. Here's the key takeaways from this, guys. Explain your customer proposition clearly and concisely. Okay, if, if you have something that's unique and different, a value proposition, you're an expert, you've got 500 reviews, you've been in the town for, for, for 40 years, whatever it is, right? Make it clear. And then for who, who, who here uses landing pages? Anybody use landing pages? You know what those are? Like a uh, CMA, things like that? What's your home worth, all that jazz, okay? Showcase customer reviews and testimonials as social proof. You have to do that. Where should your testimonials go? Absolutely, as prominent as possible and everywhere you have a presence. Facebook, right, if you have a presence there, your website, absolutely. If anybody, does anybody have a YouTube channel, anything like that, mm -hmm. yeah, there? Photographer does, okay? Testimonials, you gotta ask me for testimonials still. Okay, yeah. all right, so let's talk about how this all comes together, guys. Um, you're driving traffic to your website, who here, I wanna talk about the Facebook pixel in a moment, who here has hosted an open house? You ever get bad info from people that fill out your form in an open house, right? Mickey Mouse, like, screw you, I'm not answering, right? All that jazz, right? We all get that. Now, do you think people come to your websites uh, do you, does, uh, on your landing pages? Um, do you guys ask for information from people? Phone number, email, that kind of stuff. Do you get bogus info there? Sometimes they just, they just go away and they don't even fill it out, right? How would you like to still be able to remarket to those people that come to your website but give you bad info or no info? Would it be useful? Because they came to your website for a reason, right? Yep. Nobody goes to a website just because I want to see what this realtor's website looks like other than me. They go to your website for a specific reason. Something drove them there. Facebook Pixel, is anybody using it? Facebook's Pixel, let me explain what it is, okay? It is a snippet of code installed on your website, your landing page, your blog, etc. Here's how it works. How many of you have gone to a um, e-commerce site, Amazon or whoever, you looked at buying something, you didn't buy it, and then you saw that ad pop up everywhere. everywhere. Right? It's called retargeting. You, as a real estate agent, can retarget people who visit your site but don't leave the information you want. Okay, that's what the Facebook Pixel does. Here's how this works. Let me uh, skip forward. This is called retargeting. So here's how this works. You have a prospect who visits your website. Let's say they were on Facebook and they saw one of your listings, they go to your website. And you ask them for information, they don't leave it. Let's say you, they came to your open house and went to your website. They don't leave their information. Here's what happens. You put a snippet of code from Facebook on your website, your landing page, whatever, and when that person all of a sudden attracts that person, it puts a code on them, it follows them around the internet, just like that shopping ad. And what happens is when they go back to Facebook, because everyone's going to Facebook. <laughs> when they go back to Facebook, an ad can now pop up for them that was relevant perhaps to why they were on your website. You tracking with me? Mm -hmm. Here's what this can look like. Go to your website, find out what your home is worth. Enter your address in there and then to get the report, what do we need? We need your phone number, we need your email, we need your second born, right? Mm -hmm. All that, then they're like, I'm out, I'm not giving you my info. No problem. 
You go here, you never completed the info, you get back on Facebook, bam, guess what comes up? An ad from me offering a free valuation report. Right? What's your homework? Huh, wow, that's good. I meant to complete that form. Right? See, oftentimes it's not that people don't want the info, it's just like they get busy. I mean, I've been in shopping carts a hundred times where I'm like, I don't have time right now, right? Shut it down, something comes up, interruption, boom. And then, then you're forgotten about it. This is a really advanced way to stay top of mind with people, okay? Even, by the way, think about what it is. If you've got content on your website, you're doing um, a market update, you're talking about a local development that just happened or a listing that you have and you have a video and it's on your website and people watch that. Well, when they go to Facebook, right, you can decide based on that person's uh, behavior, journey, intent, what is the information you want them to see as they um, engage with you. By the way, they don't have to go to your, fa your page on Facebook. I don't know if you're aware of that. It's an ad that shows up in the news feed, okay? Does this make sense, guys? Yeah. All right, so if you're thinking about how do I leverage Facebook, how do I get to the customer first, because that's what it's all about, that's one way to do that. Here's a little piece of tech you can use. It's called um, Pixel Helper uh, for your Chrome browser. You simply install this on Chrome, and this will tell you any website you go to, it will tell you if there's a Facebook Pixel installed on that website, okay? And it's an easy way for you to check and make sure your Pixel's working properly if you install yours. But it's amazing when you download this and you start bouncing around, I mean, pixels everywhere, okay? You're being tracked, okay? You're being followed. And now you see that disclaimer that shows up everywhere, right? We uh, use cookies mm -hmm. on our website and you have to agree to that and all that stuff or it just floats with you the whole time, okay? So very similar. All right, okay, let's then transition to the end of our time here together and talk about how to disrupt proof your business. Everything's mirror image. Of course it is, but it's on me. See, if I flip the camera, my friend, here's what happens, right? It points at the wall, and I can't see you guys, all right? But if you want me to do this, all right, here we go. We're doing this real time, real time for our students that are watching at home. Got a whole different view here. See, that's not working well. All right, all right. All right, questions, guys, about how we put this to work in our own business. I'm ready to take questions. There. You like that, Trent? Is that happy, Trent? Okay. This is all good info, right? But what does it all matter if we don't put it to work, right? It's scary. It's scary? Yeah. What about it's scary? It's not being your computer tech at that time. Mm. It gets very overwhelming. So my answer to that would be get with a young person because they know everything. Right? Very true. I mean, I have two teenage boys, you know, they're showing me stuff all the time. I don't know, I'm gonna do to fix this, you know? Uh, and I'm learning the hard way too. I think I was just sharing with somebody earlier, where it's like I'm, you know, trying to get savvy on Instagram and all that stuff, trying to learn how to do it, and it's, it's you're right, it's like learning to drive all over again. It really is, it really is. But if we wanna engage, and by the way, does old school work? Mm -hmm. Yes, it does, yeah. it does. Uh, I know an agent I interviewed who uh, her number one source of business is cold calling FISBOs and expireds. And by the way, if you're looking for the next opportunity in the market, it's going to be expireds, especially at the higher end of the market. All right, so prepare for that because they're overpriced, wrong priced. And the market is now starting to show that. So prepare, start looking for that. Okay, what's your plan? All right, so here's how you build out your plan to stay relevant and not be disruptive. Number one, get clear on who your target audience is. Who are they? Are they first time home buyers? Are they move up buyers? Are they people relocating here, right? All those different things. Those types of people have different needs and wants, okay? Um, what is your personal brand? What are you all about? What do you stand for? Here at Movement Mortgage, we have a series of these classes that I know one of these two loan officers in the back of this room would love to do the branding class that we have available. Who would like the branding class as the next class for you guys? Look at that, see? You got your next class ready to go, okay? <laughs> So you gotta get clear on your personal brand. It's like, what are you all about? What do you stand for? Who do you serve, right? All that kind of stuff. This isn't that class, but I'm just kind of letting you know. And then you have to decide what's your content marketing strategy. How are you gonna communicate? Um, for instance, you're talking about technology and being hard to learn. So you have to decide what it is that you're going to double down on. Is it Alexa flash briefings? Is it video? Is it um, Instagram? Is it you know Facebook? You know Whatever it is, this is where people are living today is online. So yes, there is that adjustment for us to make that happen. But if you're already like on Facebook or wherever you're at, I, my advice is go where you're already at and comfortable, right? 
Um, like, I'm not going to do Snapchat, you know? Don't, it's not my thing. Don't like it. Never even been on it, to be honest with you. She's laughing at me, right? Which tells her I'm old. <laughs> I have teenagers. Teenagers are on Snapchat. They don't They don't have money to buy houses. Exactly. Right. 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 Their parents do. Their parents yeah, do. Yeah, but their parents, you know. <laughs> okay, now here's the thing, guys. The key is this, engage. Don't sit back on social media and just watch the parade go by. Engage, comment, right? Like, share. I'm going to give you some tips on how to do that in just a moment. And this, you're going to look at this data later when you get the slides. But I say engage, engage online, yeah. Because this is where people live today. This is by age bracket, according to Pew Research, this is the age bracket of where people hang out. And every time I show this, people argue with me that there's no people that are 18 to 29 years old on Facebook. Well, then tell Pew Research. I didn't pull up the data, okay? But they are a pretty good data source, as far as I know, all right? So again, whoever your target market is, this will tell you kind of where to spend your time, but also where are you comfortable? Like one agent I know of, I'll show you her, her in a minute, she's not even on Instagram. She's all in on YouTube. She gets 25 leads a week off of YouTube. She's like, I'm not even on Instagram. It's like, oh my God, you're not on Instagram. Whoa, what's wrong with you, right? So it doesn't need to be, and it's not her thing. See, that's the thing. there's all this pressure. It's like, you know, you gotta, yes, we need to be present. We need to kind of, we can't be a secret agent, right? Let's just all face that. You can't be a secret agent, okay? All right, let me back up for a second here. Here's the key. Engage with buyers and sellers as early in the funnel as possible and communicate with them religiously until closing and beyond. We said earlier, six to 12 months, average cycle. So do you want to show up on month 10? No, right? You want to show up on month one, month two, month three, as they begin to build their journey. Give them a reason to engage with you through the content that you share, the relevant problem-solving content. Here's a cool stat from the NAR. 70% of sellers choose the first agent they meet. You guys know this. So it's a matter of getting to the party first. That's it. And some of us are, here's what's gonna disrupt us this year. It's not the Zillows and the big, you know, the tech. It's whoever does this better. Whoever gets to the buyer and seller first, that's who's gonna disrupt us as real estate agents. Thus that are waiting for business to come knock on our door like, uh, I'm just waiting for people to bring me a deal, you know? <laughs> Doesn't happen, right? We need to go out and get it. All right, who wants to talk about mobile apps? Real quick, mobile apps to help make your life simple and easy, all right? Remember this, video. Video, 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 video. You've heard it a million times, I'm sorry, get off it. You don't like your look, how you look on video? That's how you look, right? Your friends and family, they know what you look like, I'm sorry. So get on video. <laughs> <laughs> you're not hiding from the world. You go out and meet a client, you're not putting a paper bag over your head, right? The unknown agent. According to Zuck, Facebook's gonna be all video in two years. Less than two years. So get comfortable now, folks. Again, this is what's gonna disrupt if we're not It's not like Zillow's gonna take business away from us and just totally shut us down. It's gonna be, if you're not relevant, that's what's gonna disrupt you is yourself. Simply not willing to evolve. Railroad industry, mm. okay? Now, some ideas for video, Facebook Live. I've been going Facebook Live the whole time here. So see, that's why I practice what I preach. Why? Six times more engagement. You've heard of the Facebook algorithm, right? It's a secret crazy tool, nobody even knows what the heck it is. Facebook is giving preference to live video in its newsfeed, which means when they see you go live, they're gonna go, oh, live video, <whistles> top of the newsfeed. You're gonna show up higher in the newsfeed. You wanna get more exposure, more engagement? Start doing live videos. Start small, start simple, right? Easy, one minute little videos. Hey, this is Jeff, I'm just out in front of this coffee shop, it's really awesome, they got this awesome cappuccino and they make the little flowers and hearts in it, it's awesome, you guys should go try it out. I don't know, whatever your thing is, right? Do the dog part. Who likes dogs? <laughs> you like dogs? I have two of them, wanna take them? <laughs> Pookie and Winnie. All right, so video viewing stats. Keep in mind, most people watch video with no sound on. How many of you do that? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, okay? Captions, captions. Need to, we need to add the captions. Here's how you do it, all right? Number one, when you upload a video to Facebook, they'll allow you to do auto captions. Anybody use that before? Okay, if not, go home and try it this weekend. Take a silly video of your dog, right? Upload it, and then enable the auto, auto captions. Start testing this stuff out, okay? It's pretty accurate. I tend to default with this unless something's more important. I go with Rev, where it's a buck a minute, 24 hour turn time, it's 100% transcription. Word for word, live people transcribing the service. 
Very, very cool stuff, okay? Um, I do this for like videos and things like videos that I want people to be able to read accurately. But the Facebook thing works great. All right, Facebook stories. I would grab my phone, but how many of you have been seeing these show up, right? That's Facebook's version of stories. You've heard of Instagram stories. This is Facebook stories coming up prominent and dominant in the feed. Facebook is doubling down on stories. Okay, much like the live videos, they're giving preference to stories. What's cool about this is when you have a new story, a story is simply you talking about something. That's it. It could be real estate related, it could be the local cool park, it could be the 4th of July fireworks, it could be the Santa parade, right, whatever it is. It's you just sharing a quick little story from your phone. It's going, hey, here I am down in town square, check out Santa's over here, he's drunk and falling down and we need to get a new Santa. Right? I don't know, something funny, okay? And so this now shows up in the people that follow you, it shows up when you have a new story, makes it easy for you to show up in the feed. Much like the um, flash briefings, this is also new. And this is not very crowded yet, but it will be, okay? So get there early. A couple quick tips for you guys to stand out in the feed even more, okay? Facebook Messenger. Here's how to get noticed and get a response by using video content. Anybody use Facebook Messenger, right? You know, ping people, hey, what's up? You know, um, talk to me, let's talk this Thursday. Okay, start sending a video instead of a text message in Facebook Messenger. Instead of typing in the message, use a video. You hit that little camera icon right there, video goes in there. Why? Especially if it's like clients, customers, people you've just met. Hey, just wanna say thanks a lot for coming by the office. I'm looking forward to working with you and answering all your real estate needs, right? Video instead of a text. It's gonna be more personal. There's a psychological thing about people seeing your face and connecting with that. Um, that's why this right here, this gal, Chelsea Pites, she's with Fidelity Title out in Arizona. She actually um, has a whole book on this. It's, it's this whole camera first technology, right? That's where we're living now, the camera first world. Is because according to research she has, the brain doesn't know the difference between a face-to-face -face real and face-to-face -face looking at that. It's the same level of human connection. That's why video is so powerful, okay? Next up, <laughs> look at that guy. Yeah. Is there a difference of sending, sending the video to a text message versus Facebook Messenger? Is there any? It's just a different tool, like a text message, we all text back and forth. No, it's just you're doing it on Facebook as a message, right, using Facebook Messenger. But there's Well, no it's like Facebook, you would have to, the difference for me would be like Facebook Messenger, I use that. Whereas text message, if I don't have data on or if the person who is not an iPhone user, then it has to go text message. It's not through that. So it's Sometimes the assumption is on Facebook Messenger is that you're already friends, right? Because typically you wanna become a friend with somebody before you send them a Facebook message, if you will, on Messenger. I mean, it's because it's kind of like the version of cold calling if you're not a friend, I guess, sort of. but. I don't overthink it, but typically, you know, there's a lot of applications for this after meeting clients or um, whatever, right? Communicating with other people. But the next option of that is like, if you want to show up in somebody's newsfeed, see, I don't like how I look on video or pictures, but there I am, okay? And so here's the idea here. If you are in somebody's newsfeed, how many here follow past clients? One, two, three people, okay. I assume past clients like you generally, right? <laughs> Uh, you want to make it a practice to follow your past clients. Friend them on Facebook and follow them. How do you stay in touch with what's going on in their lives? Right? You know, most people don't use the realtor a second time. Why? Because you've forgotten about them. Right? Because you don't stay in touch with them and stay top of mind. Facebook is an easy way to do it. Become friends and then hopefully they stay in your feed. Now, Facebook's always changing stuff, so who knows? But the bottom line is this is if you're looking for a way to stand out in somebody's news feed, you know, when people commenting, right? Like, this is a friend of mine, John Oman, who's talking about a pin he took a picture of. Uh, for Iowa State, and I'm practicing what I preach. Instead of saying, hey John, that's really cool, emojis, or people do what's called the drive-by emoji, which is the like, I'm out of here, which is losing its effectiveness because of all the noise, how do you stand out? I, I do a quick little video message to John by hitting that camera button, which opens up the camera <coughs> on my phone, and I just say, hey John, that's really cool, man, thanks for sharing that, sure do miss you, let's get together sometime. Birthday messages. People get all these birthday tech, congrats, congrats, gift, well, you know, very few are doing this. That's, ta ta that's standing out, that's being remembered, that's being unique and different. All you do is hit that little camera icon right there in the feed, and if you wanna leave it, instead of leaving a comment, you leave a video comment. Make sense? Okay, love that idea. Here's the thing, guys, big takeaway. Pick one, get started now. Pick one of these, Facebook Stories, Facebook Live, 
Instagram stories, LinkedIn video posts. We don't have time to talk about that, but LinkedIn's coming back in a big, big way, okay? And then YouTube, if that's your thing, okay? The difference about YouTube that's cool is it's searchable content. People are actually going on there searching for information about real estate, right? Like um, Henderson Homes, or buying a first home, or do I need 20% down, or state of the market, right? They're actually, it's very similar to Google. Heck, it's owned by Google, so why not? Here's that gal I talked to you about. Go follow her on YouTube, okay? Her name, what is her name? Karen, Karen. Georgia. Yeah, she's in Georgia. Uh, Karen Carr, okay? She has uh, over a 1,000 subscribers to her channel, okay? This is the gal who's not on Instagram I told you about. Oh, my God, how does she get business, right? Now, check this out. Every video here that she's posted in the last three months has over 200 views. How many of you would get nervous if you had to give a presentation in front of 200 people? Seriously, speak in front of 200 people. I want you to consider the context of what that is. That's like you standing in front of a room, giving your presentation to 200 people. Your message. How many would like that? Without the nerves. You now have an audience of 200 people listening to your message every single time. <coughs> And it's growing. She's got a thousand people, which means every time she sends out a new video, a thousand people get an email that says, Karen's got a new video on YouTube. Go check it out. That's how you get 200 views. But I want you to really understand that, you know, it's not a million views. It sucks. No, it doesn't. It's, it's like her having a room of 200 people for three minutes and five minutes at a time sharing her message about living in this part of Georgia. What does it cost to sell? Do you really need photos on your properties? 25 leads per week she's getting organically. She's not paying for it. Because she's demonstrated her expertise over time. She's definitely invested in this, right? She's learned a lot. She actually sells a course on YouTube. So guys, go check it out. Follow her on YouTube, Karen Carr. You learn a lot from her, okay? All right, a couple quick tools to help you get started with video. If that's gonna be your thing, uh, wave.video. You wanna do video on any platform, Wave will make it easy for you to do that because all these different platforms have different sizing requirements, right? Instagram Square or Vertical and then Facebook and this and that. Well, how do you hand manage all that? Boom, Wave, go check that out. Legend, if you wanna create some cool looking um, backgrounds for your, for your uh, social media photos, all kinds of templated library of backgrounds there. Adobe Spark is if you want to do some really cool animated text that flows and comes in and out. And all. I'm just giving you guys a bunch of ideas. You go pick which ones you like. This is for Instagram specifically. It's called Hype Type. And what this is, is we need to create what's called thumb stopping content. Because who's doing this through the feed, right? Scroll, 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 and then stop. Got it. All right? So let's check a look, take a look at that. Cut story. Is anybody doing Instagram stories? No? Yes, I know you are, Brandon, of course. You're the advanced student in the room. You're doing Instagram stories. So cuts, you know how it limits you to 15 seconds? So Instagram stories like the Facebook story, where it's a quick little snippet about, hey, I'm doing this or whatever, come check it out, or you know, blah, 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 blah. They limit you to 15 seconds, Instagram, right now. Cut story allows you to make that longer. They'll actually uh, stitch together multiple short videos and make it one video. It's pretty cool. So you can go like a minute, two minutes, whatever you want to do, all right? Um, what else we got here? Just remember this, social is not media. Even though we're talking about media and video and tools and all that kind of stuff, it's a conversation. It's a conversation, that's it, all right? And for sake of time, I'm gonna skip forward and just remember this. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh, let me go back right here. I want, I want to reiterate once again. The percentage of people who use a real estate professional during a transaction, 18 to 34 is 91%. You're not being disrupted by consumers per se, you're being disrupted by your own lack of self-disruption. Okay, 35 to 44 year olds, 94%, and then these folks 55 and older, hey man, I can handle it myself, you know, just 80% of them. <laughs> this is some stats on what makes people choose an agent, right? It's all about people you can trust, credibility, list, uh, uh, reviews, all that fun stuff. And just to wrap it up, agents will, who win the customer early with a blend of digital-centric service, reduce the friction. Digital-centric service and a menu of local services. So provide everything to me, make my life easy. Give me a lender. Anybody know a good lender in the room? <laughs> yeah, we've got a couple of them right here. Movement mortgage, right? Moving come everything I need for my transaction, give it to me. So I don't have to go to all these different places. Be the professional who recommends right, these different services. All right. As we said, it's a race to the best customer experience. 
Good ideas today? Yeah. All right, cool. Let's do this. I want to take a minute and just hand out these uh, feedback forms. We'd love to hear what your one big idea is from today. And how else we can help you. That would be the goal. So just turn those in on the way out, and your email will be, um, you'll get a link to download the file, Dropbox file. And I'm going to turn this back around. Let's see what we got here. So for those, for those watching at home, tell everybody how much you like the class today. Yes? yes. Yeah. All right. So if there's any comments from the Facebook world, I'll take those now. I'm looking for my glasses. So I can read your comments if you're still here. I'm going to reverse this. Let's go this way. Don't do that, Brendan. can't do that while I'm recording. Okay. See, I'm learning in real time as well. I'm trying to turn this so I can see the comments. Yeah. All right. Okay, everybody. Facebook land. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.